Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Dear listeners, you're welcome to Voice of Korea, non Jewish version here in this transmission. First in news, the news is followed by the last instrument of the great leader Kim jong his work, our socialism center in the masses, Shalat Parish, and then an account, carrying the design of the people from our daily program, the workers' part of Korea, glorious 65 years. And then you'll appreciate an immortal famous masterpiece of Korea, Korea I'll Add Glory to Thee, from our regular program, Foreign Friends Sing, and then an account, Most Brilliant Commander, and then an account, Where Maniacs Bring Nuclear War Disasters. Finally, we introduce the song, Look at Us, widely sung among the Korean people's army soldiers and people of Korea, and you'll enjoy some songs between the programs. Now here is the news. The participants in the Pyongyang International Insurance Seminar sent a letter of thanks to the great leader Kim Jong-il on the 8th. The letter expressed deep thanks to leader Kim Jong-il for having paid deep attention for the successful progress of the Pyongyang International Insurance Seminar and accorded kind hospitality to the participants. The letter said, the recent seminar made a great contribution to devitalizing at an early date the economy of different countries of the world, stagnant due to the aftermath of the world financial crisis and achieving sustained economic development. This time, we have realized well that Korea has enhanced a preventive and compensatory function rule of insurance so as to make a substantial contribution to the people's livelihood and economic development. We will develop close terms with Korean insurance in the future. We believe that under the guidance of leader Kim Jong-il, the Korean people will open the gate to a great prosperous and powerful nation in 2012. Much of the society both are the of accustomed Kim Il-sung, the letter said. It sincerely wished to leader Kim Jong-il good health and happiness. 
The great little king from Iowa sold gas from the Jato Hall Company Limited and the Kupu Gai Company Limited of Britain. The gifts were conveyed to an official confirmed on the 8th by Rafael Nicolais, Director General of the Jato Hall Company Limited of Britain, and Trevor John Brown, Director of the Kupu Gai Company Limited of Britain, respectively, who are participating in the Pyongyang International Insurance Cinema. Meanwhile, a gift sent to Great Kim Jong Il by Jake Ivan Dinger, Deputy Director General of the High Country Insurance Brokerage Company of Switzerland, was handed over to an official consent on the 7th. The annual title Great Teachers was conferred upon the great leaders Kim Il Sung and Kim Jong Il, and the anti Japanese war heroine Kim Jong Sook, three commanders of Mount Tobacco of Korea, and Sung within the Ibarra city in Nagoya province, Ekagura. An event will convey the certificate of the honorary title for the three commanders of Mount Bacto recently took place in the city. Present at the event were officials of the city government and members of the Korean Gordia Medical Corporation Group working in Ecuador. The certificate was handed over to the head of the Korean Gordia Medical Corporation Group. Addressing the event, the mayor of the city said, they took it as an honor to confer the honor of the great teachers to the three great persons of Korea again on the occasion of the 46th anniversary of leader Kim jong the start of work at the Central Committee of the Workers' Party of Korea after they awarded the title of honorary citizen to them some time ago. The Mexican Institute of the Church ID issued bulletin number 57 on the occasion of the 46th anniversary of the great leader Kim Jong-un's start of work at the Central Committee of the Workers' Party of Korea. In an article titled, Invincible Party, the Workers' Party of Korea, the bulletin praised the immortal exploits of leader Kim Jong-il for the strengthening and development of the Workers' Party of Korea and stressed that, led by the great leader, the Workers' Party of Korea will always demonstrate its dignity as an invincible party. Voices denounced in the anti-DPK confrontation plots of the U.S. imperialists and the traitorous Lee Min group of South Korea are becoming louder in different parts of Korea as the days go by. Mass rallies were held at the Pyongyang Textile Mill, the Senejo Footwear Factory, the Sunsun Area Youth Coal Mining Complex, the Sunni Motor Complex, the Sanjiang Cooperative Farm in Jadan County, and other factories, enterprises, and farms across the country. The reporters and speakers at the rally said the sinking of the South Korean warship is a farce fabricated by the South Korean puppets under patronage of the U.S. imperialists. They expressed a resolve to bring about great innovations, great leap forward in production, in the spirit of smashing the South Korean puppet traders, was senselessly running while crying out for so-called punishment and retaliation. The socialist cooperative fields across the DPRK are seeking the devoted efforts of the agricultural working people and assistants to significantly celebrate the 65th anniversary of the founding of the Workers' Party of Korea. Though the spring farming season was delayed owing to the unusually bad weather, rice transplantation has been done at over 70%, Rice seedlings are being transplanted in more than 20,000 hectares of paddy fields every day these days throughout the country, and more than 70 cities and counties have already finished the rice transplantation in the main fields. Besides, the first weeding of maize fields is now going on across the country at the final stage. The second weeding is done in over 18,000 hectares of fields on a daily average, and bean sowing and the first weeding of bean fields are going on at 103% and 160% respectively as against the daily plans. The Pyongyang International Insurance Seminar closed. The closing ceremony took place at the Yang Rakdo International Hotel in Pyongyang on the 8th. Present at the ceremony were Park Soo-hye, Vice Premier and Minister of Finance, officials of the Korean National General Insurance Company, insurance workers from local areas and officials concerned. Also present there were Ejat Abdelbari, Secretary General of the Federation of Afro-Asian Insurers and Reinsurers and his party, Roberto Quinta Martinez, Permanent Secretariat of the Association of Insurance and Reinsurance in Developing Countries, Delegates of companies of China, Morocco, the Sudan, Switzerland, the United Kingdom, India, and Egypt. 
Also present there was a delegation of the Korean Insurance Company of the General Association of Korean Residents in Japan. A letter of thanks to the great leader Kim Jong-il was adopted at the closing ceremony. In the seminar held before the closing ceremony, papers of various subjects, such as general consideration of maritime cargo insurance and new trend in the reinsurance market were presented and speeches were made. The participants discussed problems arising in maritime insurance and related branches and exchanged experiences accumulated in the field. The permanent representative of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea to the United Nations sent a letter to the chairman of the UN Security Council. The letter reads, To His Excellency Mr. and Mr. Claude Heller, Chairman of the UN Security Council. Your Excellency, I send this letter to you concerning the grave situation recently created on the Korean Peninsula. On May 20th, 2010, the United States and the South Korean authorities announced the results of investigation which groundlessly linked the sinking of the South Korean warship channel to the DPRK. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea totally opposed and rejected the results of investigation of the United States and South Korea and declared that it has nothing to do with the case of the Chunan and proposed dispatching an inspection group of the National Defense Commission to the spot for an objective confirmation of the results of investigation. We remind you of the fact that the results of investigation of the United States and South Korea are arousing doubt and denunciation of the public at home and abroad since its announcement and it is fully disclosed to clear the materials based on a military and scientific analysis and objective reality that the results are a out for a political and military purpose of the United States as the time goes by. What is fundamental in the settlement of the case of the Chunan is a scientific and objective inspection and confirmation of the results of investigation by the TPRK, the victim. The Union Security Council should not follow in the footsteps of itself, which legalized the armed invasion of Iraq with a lawyer appeal in February 2003, and thus was reduced to a tool of high-handedness and arbitrariness of the United States. The UN Security Council has the duty to observe the principle of respect of sovereignty of the UN member states and impartiality as stipulated in the UN Charter. If the UN Security Council that regards maintenance of world peace and security as its life and soul wants peace and security of the Korean Peninsula in which a touch and go situation has been created due to the case of the Chunan, it should first of all take measures helpful to making the United States and South Korea accept the inspection group of the National Defense Commission already proposed by the TPRK to victim and let it confirm the results of investigation. By so doing, it should give priority to clarifying the truth behind the case fairly and objectively. If only the unilateral results of investigation without confirmation of the victim are submitted and discussed at the UN Security Council, our sovereignty and security will be clearly encouraged upon, and then nobody can be assured of what serious consequences it might bring to the peace and security of the Korean Peninsula. I wish you to circulate this letter and the answer of a spokesman for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the TPRK, dated June 4, 2010, in close hearing as an official document of the UN Security Council. Sin Sun-ho, permanent representative of the TPRK to the United Nations, June 8, 1999 or 2010. The second corps of the South Korean Puppet Army announced a plan to stage ground command exercises in Chuncheon and Hwacheon of South Korean Kowon province between the 9th and the 11th. The Puppet War Horse spread that they would stage exercises such as wholesale search and reconnaissance, blockade and task force operation to cope with somebody's infiltration and provocation. The traitors Lin and the girl, far from drawing a lesson from the stern judgment of the people, are still inciting inter-Korean confrontation and running wild to bring dark clouds of an aggressive war. The South Korean headquarters of the movement for the withdrawal of the U.S. forces made public an article on the third as regards the fact that the recent elections to local autonomous bodies ended with a disgraceful defeat of the puppet who had been running counter to the desires of the nation, ignoring the public welfare. 
The arts will maintain that the South Korean people got this religion about and eventually judged the traitors who have driven the South Mass relations favorably developing after the publication of the June 15th joint declaration to the brink of war. The act will stress that all the fraudulent forces of the Lenin the group, including the sinking of the worship, will be soon made clear. The South Korean National Teachers Union held a meeting in Seoul on the 5th demanding the puppet authorities cancel the disciplinary punishment against the teachers under the union. The union criticized that the present region's suppression of the National Teachers Union reveals its policy of education only for a minority of the privileged class. DPRK delegate spoke of the Geneva meeting for disarmament on the third. He said, now the situation of the Korean Peninsula has reached a serious stage at which nobody knows when a war may break out. The sinking of the worship Tsunam is a conspiratorial farce fabricated by the South Korean authorities conjecturally and the Shirad orchestrated under the patronage of the United States. Nowhere on the globe is found such a reason as the Korean Peninsula where mysteries has lasted over half a century. We proposed again to the States a signature to the Amnesty Agreement, an earlier start of talks for replacing the Amnesty Agreement with a peace treaty this year, the 60th year of the outbreak of the Korean War. The conclusion of the peace treaty is the only reasonable and realistic way to denuclearize the Korean Peninsula, the Korean delegate stressed. Fidel Castro rules, leader of the Cuban Revolution, contributed a letter title and by a falsehood to the fourth issue of the Cuban newspaper Grandma, which exposed the truth behind the sinking of the South Korean Navy's warship Tsunan. In the article, Fidel said, the curtain over the truth behind the case of the Tsunan was finally lifted on June 5th and enumerated the contentions of information sources exposing the deceptive nature of the United States concerning the case. He noted that political leaders and world public had evidences showing sardonicism and brazenness characterizing the U.S. imperialist policy. Mexican political parties and organizations, including the People's Socialist Party of Mexico and the Mexican Committee for the Study of Kimmel-Sanism, issued a joint statement on June 1st on the occasion of the 10th anniversary of the June 15th Inter-Korean Joint Declaration. The statement strongly demanded the United States respond to the consistent stand of the Workers' Party of Korea and the government of the DPRK to put an end to the hostile relations between the DPRK and the United States, establish a durable peace mechanism of the Korean Peninsula through dialogue and negotiations, and realize denuclearization. The statement resolutely demands the United States, the South Korean traitors, and their followers for their senior campaign against the DPRK concerning the recent sinking of the South Korean puppet army's worship. The statement called on all political parties, governments, and organizations of the world aspiring after peace and reunification of Korea to support powerfully the Workers' Party of Korea and the Korean people in their struggle to reunify the country independently under the banner of the June 15th Joint Declaration and defend the security of the country and the sovereignty of the nation. On the same occasion, the Cambodian newspaper Kumayamata, the Egyptian newspaper al Masaya, and the Jordanian newspaper al Jai recently carried commemorative articles under different titles including Milestone of Korea's Reunification. And that's the end of the news read by Chen Chai and Kim Hyun Oh. This is Voice of Korea. The daily voting union of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea on Wednesday carried a commentary titled Grave challenge to peace. The commentary said, The United States gets more undisguised day by day in its moves to destroy the strategic balance of strength and gain absolute military ascendancy. Some time ago, the U.S. Air Force flight tested a supersonic unmanned plane which can strike any part of the Earth within one hour. Some years ago, the United States announced a plan to develop new weapons capable of making a precision attack on any region of the world in a short time, and has made desperate efforts to realize it. The recent test flight of supersonic drone is a link of such movements. While developing new offensive weapons, the United States is accelerating the establishment of missile defense system at the practical stage. 
The US Patriot interceptor missiles and more than 100 US soldiers have recently been deployed in the US military base in northeast Poland. The frantic movements of the United States for the development of the rapid striking weapons and establishment of the missile defense system. I am gaining absolute military ascendancy and realizing its aggressive strategy for world domination. It is an act against history and peace inviting a new arms race to the international arena. The now deceptive tricks, however, can the United States cover up its crimes and true colors as the mastermind of the international arms race and disturber of real peace and security. That was the gist of commentary on the title, Grave Challenge to Peace, carried in the Daily Rodong Sinan on Wednesday. This is the Voice of Korea. Dear listeners, now is the time for broadcasting the great liberal Kim Jong-il's work on the socialism center in the message she not publish. Today we present the last instrument. In order to put an end to the abuse of power and bureaucracy and to establish the red messenger method and popular style of work, a proper work system should be set up. Without going among the masses, officials cannot listen to their voices or work in keeping with their will and the news nor can they organize and mutinize them. Our party put forward the slogan, let the whole party go among the masses, and established a well-organized work system under which all officials go among the masses. Going among the masses to work has become the habit of our officials, and in the course of this, subjectivism, bureaucracy, formalism, and other outdated work methods and styles have been overcome. Our party has ensured that officials not only go among the masses, but also keep political work ahead of all other work and solve problems by a political method. Keeping political work ahead of all other work is the intrinsic demand of a social society which develops due to the high revolutionary enthusiasm and creative activity of the working people. Our party put up the slogan, let the whole party become a propagandist and an agitator and has made sure that all officials go among the masses and give priority to political work to find the revolutionary enthusiasm of the working people. Our officials go among the masses and arouse them vigorously to join the revolution in construction while explaining party policies to them and sharing will and war with them. In order to put an end to the misuse of power and bureaucracy and to establish the revolutionary method and popular style of work, ideological education and the ideological struggle should be undertaken boldly by officials. The wielding of power, bureaucracy and the other obsolete work methods and stories are a manifestation of outdated ideological remnants and they are deep-rooted. Without constant ideological education and the continuous ideological struggle among officials, it is impossible to eliminate outdated work methods and styles such as the misuse of power and bureaucracy. While ensuring that officials equip themselves fully with the theory and method of social leadership created by the great leader, our party has stated that ideological education was provided and an ideological struggle ventured with the data on positive and negative phenomena manifested in work methods and styles. In the course of persistent ideological education and the continual ideological struggle, the wielding of power, bureaucracy, and other outdated work methods and styles are being eliminated. As a consequence, the revolutionary method and popular style of work are being firmly established within our party. In the future, too, we should continue with the struggle to overcome every manner of outdated work method and style, such as the wielding of power and bureaucracy, and to establish the revolutionary method and popular style of work. In this way, we shall strengthen and develop our party into an invincible revolutionary party, which is in perfect harmony with the popular masses, and enjoys that and receive the support and confidence and lead them to accomplish the revolution because of duty. Today our people have all that trust in the party and the leader, and are marching forward along the road indicated by the party and the leader. Faithful to the slogan, when the party is determined, we can do anything. Our people are striving to implement party lines and policies, 
through thick and thin. The part and the leader believe in and have profound love for the people, and the people place absolute trust in the party and the leader who support them. This is the true nature of a single-hearted unity. Nothing can break the might of a style of socialism in which the leader, the party and the masses are united as one. They dream in the mind of the single-hearted unity among the leader, the party and the masses, we must frustrate the anti-socialist machinations of the imperialists and reactionaries, achieve the independent reunification of the culture, and then, without fire, the final victory of socialism and communism. With the announcement to the last installment of the great leader Kim Zemel's work, our socialism centered in the masses shall it perish. This is Voice of Korea. The Lucas Party of Korea, glorious 65 years. Now you listen to an account, telling the desire of the people. What is most brilliant in the history of the Lucas Party of Korea is the admirable resolution of the issue of the continuity of the leadership of the party in the course of the development of the revolution. In the 1970s, the Lucas Party of Korea brilliantly solved the problem of the continuity of the leadership by having at its leadership the great leader Kim Jong-il, who made a special contribution to the revolution and construction with his activities in the party for many years. It was the unanimous desire of the Lucas Party of Korea and the people to have him at the leadership of the party. At that time, the cause of the Lucas Party of Korea, the great leader Kim Il-sung had pioneered and led to victory into the new highest stage for the complete victory of socialism. The Lucas Party of Korea faced the task to more forcefully accelerate the ideological, technical and cultural revolutions, promote national unification and expedite the independent cause of humankind under the banner of the church idea. Around that time, the generation was changing in the ranks of the Korean Revolution, and new generations were playing the key role in the revolution and construction. It urgently demanded an earlier solution of the issue of the continuity of the cause of the party. What is fundamental in the issue was to correctly stop the issue of continuity of leadership. In the 1970s, Great Kim Jong-un, with outstanding qualities and features as the leader of new generation, was enjoying infinite respect and absolute trust of the Workers' Party of Korea and entire people for his distinguished exploits for the party and revolution. Kim Jong-un was a paragon of great revolutionary with infinite loyalty and moral obligation to the leader and the party, and a great man with intelligence as a thinker and theoretician and extraordinary leadership ability as a statesman and uncommon strategist as a military strategist. He was also the personifier of noble benevolence. Knowing his special political ability and noble benevolence, the members of the Workers' Party of Korea and the people firmly believe that great Kim Jong-un is the leader of the Workers' Party of Korea to carry forward the revolutionary cause of Juche generation after generation. Calling Kim Jong-un respected leader, intelligent leader, and dear leader, the Korean people kept sending to the Central Committee of the Workers' Party of Korea petitions and letters earnestly wishing him to be held at the head of the Workers' Party of Korea and the revolution. The excitement and emotion of the people were boundless when he was elected to the leadership of the Workers' Party of Korea according to the people's wish. Celebration meetings were held across the country. It is the proudest success in the building of the Workers' Party of Korea that the issue of the continuity of the leadership of the Workers' Party of Korea was solved according to the demand of development of the revolution and the desire of the popular masses. It was a great event firmly guaranteeing the rosy future and brilliant victory of the Workers' Party of Korea and Korean Revolution. As the Workers' Party of Korea was led by Kurt Kim Jong-un, a new turning point was opened in further increasing the fighting efficiency of the party and strengthening and developing the party as the party of President Kim Il-sung forever, and the firm guarantee was provided to carry forward to completion the revolutionary cause of Juche generation after generation.
listening to an account carrying the desire of the people from our regular program, the Workers' Party of Korea, glorious 65 years. This is basic Korea. Foreign friends sing. Now we will appreciate an immortal famous masterpiece of Korea, Korea I'll add glory to be. The song was written by the great leader Kim Jong-il on September 1st, 1960, when he started his revolutionary activities at Kim Il-sung University. The song reflects the firm will of respected Kim Jong-il to glorify Korea all over the world true to the lofty intention of great president Kim Il-sung. Now you'll appreciate a song in female solo of Indonesian musician Bino Dalip.
must appreciate and emote our famous masterpiece of Korea, Korea I and Glory to Be, from our very poor and foreign friends sing. This is Voice of Korea. Now here's our count, most brilliant commander. Now the Korean army and people are burning their hearts with a resolve to resolutely smash the suffocation movies of the South Korean puppets and their accomplices, the United States and Japan and other anti dpk forces, concerning the sinking of the South Korean warship Chonan and winning victory in the confrontation with them. The condition of victory is rooted in the national pride of having Kim Jong-il praised and revered by the world as the most brilliant commander. The long sending based guidance of great Kim Jong-il has trained the Korean People's Army into an invincible army and always won victory in the confrontation with the imperialists and other reactionaries. His quality and capacity as a brilliant commander were more clearly demonstrated, especially after 1990. Taking advantage of the collapse of different socialist countries in Eastern Europe, the imperialist allied forces further strengthened their movements to isolate and suffocate Korea than ever before. A final war to defend the destiny of the country, nation, and socialism was more serious under unprecedented trials. With a firm belief that the victory in the confrontation depends on the turning of powerful revolutionary armed forces, leader Kim Jong-il enforced the politics or army first politics in an all-round way. He regarded military affairs as the most important of state affairs and devoted his efforts to the strengthening of the armed forces. Saying the might of ideology is stronger than atomic bomb, leader Kim Jong-il paid primary attention to the political and ideological strengthening of the army. And he made a continued march of field guidance to army units so as to markedly increase combat capabilities of the Korean People's Army. As a result, the Korean People's Army could be trained into invincible revolutionary armed forces with strong ideology, faith and fighting capacity leading the military confrontation with the enemy to victory with his extremely subtle strategy he is defending the destiny of the country, people and socialism. The Russian newspaper Patriot wrote, What kind of man is a distinguished commander of the present era? A man who not only possesses the capacity to win a war, but also defends the sovereignty of the country and the interests of the nation and prevents a war, can be considered to be such a commander. It can be confidently said that Kim Jong-il, supreme commander of the Korean People's Army, is a man of such ability. Even the enemy expresses admiration that leader Kim Jong-il is a special statesman with mysterious tough policy and marvelous commanding art. The Korean army and people, under the guidance of the most brilliant commander Kim Jong-il, will emerge victorious in the present confrontation too. That is our count, most brilliant commander. This is the voice of Korea. Now here is a chorus, led by Yeo Ryan Win. General Kim Jong Il steered the single hearted army and gave it treasure the sword, led by Yeo without fear and a formidable enemy, led by Yeo Ryan Win. <laughs>
future sentiment continue to enter, where new leaks bring nuclear war disasters. Dear listeners, the present South Korean rulers are bringing dark clouds of a nuclear war to this land, ignoring the efforts of the Korean people and the world progressive humanity to eliminate military tension and ensure peace on the Korean Peninsula. Owing to the recent fabrication of the sinking of the warship Tsuman by the South Korean puppets, the North South relations have been totally ruptured and the disasters of the war are looming large on the nation. Such a serious situation has been escalated due to the premeditated war movements of the South Korean puppets. Soon after they took power, the German conservatives of South Korea filed for the opening of the DPRT and change of its system and blew that the DPRT should be considered to be the opposite in confrontation. They kicked up a human rights racket against the DPRT and brought it against the international arena. Recently, they revealed even an attempt to strike the DPRK, claiming about a contingency. Various North Titan War scenarios are being finally replenished and completed according to the allegations on contingency and preemptive attack. The military doctrine of the South Korean puppet army has been revised for countermeasures for contingency and preemptive attack, and the command and operation and training contents are being modified according to the doctrine. It is put into practical action through such joint military exercises as key results and the full eagle. The South Korean Puppet Minister of National Defense, Kim Tae Yong, said they have a detailed list of more than 100 nuclear targets of the North and repeatedly blurred that the attack is possible at any time and that they must attack if a sign of nuclear attack of the North is identified and there is an evident intention of attack. When the warship sank, the puppets regarded it as a golden chance to drive the North-South relations to rupture and predetermined it as a product of the North from the outset. They cried for countermeasures and retaliation and they are lighting the face to a war. Their confrontation and war movers culminate in the conspiratorial fuss of the puppet concerning the sinking of the warship. All this shows that the traitors are the most vicious war units crazed for confrontation and war. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea values the North-South relations but will never tolerate the confrontation and war movements of the South Korean puppet. And if the South Korean traitors trigger off a war in a league with the United States, our Republic will answer it with a merciless and resolute punishment. You will listen to an account of the country where maniacs bring nuclear war disasters. This is Voice of Korea. We will enjoy a female duet. Riva Tebon, I will fight to defend you. Uh -huh.
We now introduce the song, Look at Us, widely sung among the Korean people's army soldiers and people of Korea. The song, Look at Us, was created in 1992. The Korean army and people had a great leader Kim Jong-il as the supreme commander of the Korean People's Army on December 24, 1991. As a soldier under an illustrious commander and middle week, so the Korean People's Army is still displaying its indestructible might as an invincible army led by most illustrious supreme commander Kim Jong-il and all the service persons of the Korean People's Army are filled with great pride as its soldiers. The song represents such might and pride of the Korean people's army. The first stanza of the song proudly sings of the Korean people's army as an invincible army with iron discipline and strong combat capabilities. They and its glistening footstep stump were the soldiers of the great general. Rigid of discipline, writing, action, who can ever challenge us? Look, look at us, then you will be reassured. Look, we are the leaders invincible soldiers. The second and third stanzas represent the indomitable will of the Korean People's Army, defender of the motherland and people, to destroy the aggressors at one stroke and win victory for the security of the motherland and people with the aggressors indeed. Though a threatening class gather we do not waver at all, my parents, brothers and sisters do not worry at all. Look, look at us, then you will be reassured. Look, we are the leaders invisible soldiers. We are a righteous army fighting for freedom and for peace. If the aggressors attack us, we'll beat them with one blow. Look, look at us, then you'll be reassured. Look, we are the leaders invincible soldiers. The melody is in the mood of March, full of militant spirit and optimism. Now, women Bang and other traitors in South Korea fabricated the conspiratorial case of the sinking of their worship and are leading the situation of the Korean Peninsula to an extremely dangerous stage. However, the Korean People's Army, with inexhaustible strength, will mercilessly annihilate the enemy, vigorously singing the song, Look at Us. Now we will appreciate the song in main chorus of the state military chorus. <laughs>
Dr. Sir, did you introduce the song Look at Us, widely sung among the Korean people's army soldiers and people of Korea? This is Voice of Korea. the Voice of Korea from the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Voice of Korea presents its English language service for Euro between 13 and 14 hours UTC, between 15 and 16 hours UTC, between 18 and 19 hours UTC, and between 21 and 22 hours UTC, and 14,760 kHz and 15,245 kHz. For North America, between 13 and 14 hours UTC, and between 15 and 16 hours UTC, on 9,345 kHz and 11,710 kHz. And for North East Asia, between 1 and 2 hours UTC, and between 3 and 4 hours UTC, on 7,200 kHz, 9,345 kHz, and 9,730 kHz. Goodbye, this is Pyongyang.